Okay, I'm going to um, introduce you to the process of making fire starters and uh, fire logs. First of all, I'll go ahead and bring this up and show you some of the fire logs and fire starters that I've made. Okay, um, when this process is done, you eat, these are a fire log. They're made with paper towel roll, um, the center of the paper towel. And uh, it's just the material I'm fixing to make is packed in there, nice and tight and allowed to cool. They burn easily. Um, they burn for a, quite a while. And they will help you catch uh, dry wood and wood that is not real um, easy to burn. They keep the fire going so that you can burn it. I use paper towel rolls. I use toilet paper roll tubes. Um, and those are the logs. Uh, they burn pretty hot and for a good while because I don't put a whole lot of wax in it and you'll see that. The wax relationship to the sawdust needs to be uh, something you'll, you'll work out if you try this. I had to. If you get it too waxy then it burns too fast and it smokes more and it's just not as nice a mix if you don't get enough wax in it then it doesn't hold together real well when it's burning it burns kind of slow okay um so those are the logs Whoa! let me get that thing down um here are the fire starters right here. I put them in bags of a dozen usually and uh, they are little biscuits, little fire biscuits. When you light them they light really fast and uh, one to two in a wet firebox will start your wood. They're they're really nice. They're really nice. Um, they're not as consistent as the tubes are, so uh, when I have damp wood, I'm more likely to use that. Okay, another component is paraffin, and there are two kinds of paraffin. One are paraffin beads, and that's what I'll be using for the most part. Um, the paraffin beads are uh, just little pieces of wax, and uh, they mix in fast, they melt fast, and they're really handy. You can buy those at a craft store. The other kind of paraffin that I use is a uh, paraffin block. And these are paraffin blocks. Those come apart pretty easy with a uh, putty knife or a spreader, some kind of a spreading tool. Uh, they can just chop those right apart and chop them up into smaller pieces. And so that works and I do use that sometimes. I prefer the uh, beads nowadays to that. Another thing that you can put in are, uh, let me look back here, yeah, is uh, the leavings from uh, old candles. You always get a little bit of this left behind and you can break that up and put it in there and it'll melt into that wax as well. So that's another choice for ingredients. Another thing I used in them this winter that was really cool and um, it's nice. When the logs burn you definitely get a Right at first you'll get a little bit of a paraffin smell, but not much. 
you really get the cedar wood smell. And last winter, I tried mixing in some dried uh, herbs, and that smelled really good. Uh, I tried mixing in the needles from my uh, Christmas tree last year, and that burned good and smelled like um, burning conifer, like a burning uh, campfire where you're using pine or spruce, whatever. So anyway, those are the main components of this process. I'm going to go ahead and load the crock pot. Right now I've got it set on high because I've been warming the crock. It is a, a slow cooker. Any, I would use an inexpensive slow cooker. You want one that's dependable but inexpensive uh, because you're going to, I use it in my studio and I use it for different sorts of things. So I don't know that I would invest in an, in an expensive one. I'm going to bring that up just a little bit. You could see my wood shavings in that uh, sack. I do a lot of woodwork and when I do the woodwork, the planings go into a sack and I can use them for various projects. And this is one of them. They also make good mulch. Um, you can use them as a lightweight amalgamate in uh, clay and in uh, uh, concrete. Um, they The fibers bond pretty well and coat with the concrete pretty well. So those are the ingredients. For making this, once the crock begins to heat up, and it is, I'll turn it down to low because I don't like burning the sawdust, and I've done that before. That's not a pleasant thing. I'm also going to bring up some of the tools I use. In doing this. And I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. Um, I frequently stir with this. I use this for all kinds of things. I am a multifunctional person. I believe that a lot of tools are just um, a lot of tools and uh, you can use them for what you need to use them for. Okay, the first thing is I get a good handful of this. It'll stick in your hand pretty good. I shake off the other stuff so that it doesn't go, get everywhere. And then I bring it in and I put it in there. One good handful of that. One small handful of this. Yeah, I just kind of scattered right on top of that. I'm going to put a little more because I had a lot of uh, stuff in that first one. You can adjust this mix later if it seems to be too uh, one way or the other. There's another handful of it, and that's going to, not quite, but just about fill my crock. I need one more slight handful of it. Yeah, there we go. This will compact a little bit while it's heating. And uh, all of that will go down in there. And I'm just going to kind of hit it a little bit at the top. Kind of make it, join it together a little bit there. And uh, put the lid on. Now that's going to have to heat for two or three hours. And I'll come in and check it every now and then. And once it has uh, finished... Then I'll show you about loading it into the forms. Choosing a slow cooker is important. Um, it does not need to be expensive. In fact, honestly, 
I would rather not have an expensive one. I use a lot of um, tools in my studio. Slow cooker is one of them. I have a heating plate. You don't want to use a pan and a heating plate. It just doesn't do as well. Uh, the bottom gets hot. The sides don't. Uh, the slow cooker is much the better choice. And use an inexpensive one. All you need are a couple settings and um, heat. Yeah. Um, you want to set it on high to get it warm. But then when you put the shavings and the paraffin in, you want to turn it down to low so that you won't burn the bottom layer of uh, sawdust, which does happen as the wax comes down through it. That bottom can get very, very burnt. And so you don't want to do that. You want to heat it on slow. It'll still uh, all melt and integrate together within a couple, three hours. I wanted to talk to you about different grades of wood shavings. All of them will work. This is what I've been using. Um, this is from the planer, and it's very short pieces, and uh, none of it, it's not super fine. It, you can see the cloud of dust, and it makes me cough a little bit when I'm using it, but um, that is what I love the best. This one right here, is uh, from using Sureform blade and they're long strands, uh, quite long strands. Uh, it's very loose and there are some applications, other applications of things I use uh, wood shavings for that that works a little more wonderfully for. Uh, it makes great cob and some other things like that. Um, it makes a good filler for amalgamate. So once you get a hold of the strand, quite a bit pulls out. So anyway, um, this will work in the process that I'm doing right now for the fire starters. If you mix it with this, it's better. If you've got, say, one handful of this and three hands full of that, you can kind of pull that, loosen it up, and by the time the wax gets all in it, it'll all soak in there and uh, go into the forms uh, pretty good. So that will work for what I'm doing. It's just a little harder to just use that. Um, you can see I've got a really big uh, box of it and most of it is the longer, hairier stuff. This is a Sureform blade and it uh, my kids call it cheese grater, my students. Uh, it pulls the wood off in long strips, and that's what that's what this is. Most of this was uh, gathered before I got my electric planer, which gives me more of that. Uh, so before I got my electric planer, I used the Sureform blade a lot, and I got the curly stuff, the long strands. Um, this has a lot of the finer sawdust in it, and this works just fine in that. It, it's a little denser, it compacts a little more, but uh, it's, a, it's a lot more of a sawdusty kind of stuff than the, uh, the wood shavings from the planer. I do have a hand planer. And it tends to bring things off in um, bigger strips than the electric planer. So anyway, I wanted to talk to you about those different grades of sawdust that I use in my uh, fire starter. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to show you the stirring process. Uh, you can see that around the edges it's kind of uh, 
melty, but in the middle it's still pretty woody. And I'm going to just pull that forward just a little bit and uh, let the stuff fall down in there that isn't melted yet. Pull it back. Let the stuff that isn't melty fall down in there. Yeah. Sometimes I have to put a little extra uh, wax in or a little extra sod in, in after it's completely melted. And, uh, but this isn't the time to check that. It's not the time to do it yet. Yeah. So what I've got is I've pulled that in. And I'm going to just kind of stir that melty stuff back into the non-melty stuff just a little bit. I usually uh, check it every hour or so and uh, stir it in. You can see a lot of it's getting melted. It's got a little ways to go. It looks like it's about a third of the way done. Cockpot's not so hot that I can't just kind of come and wipe it in. It's not, I mean, I wouldn't hold my hand on those, but uh, it can. And you can, I can feel the wax in it. So I know that the uh, proportions may be pretty much right. I'm gonna show you this and uh, some other things in here. Um, this is one of those tables I made when I first moved into my studio. And these back here are uh, in this cart I made to hold them. I've got five of those discs. Anyway, this is about ready to use. It's uh, pretty consistent. It's uh, the wax is pretty much activated into all of the sawdust and shavings, and it's pretty much what it should look like. Uh, you'll feel a little wax, but it doesn't just put wax all over your fingers, but you'll feel the wax when you're handling it. It just doesn't leave. If it leaves wax on your hand, then you need to get a little more sawdust and uh, heat that in it so that you get uh, a little less wax on your hands. You want it to stick together inside the forms, but you don't want it to be super waxy because when it burns, um, if it's burning mostly paraffin, it'll burn it up pretty fast and uh, it'll smell kind of paraffin smoky, which this will smoke a little, but it will smell like cedar. And when you put evergreen or whatever like that in it, it will also smell more true to the herbs or the evergreens or whatever you have in there. Yeah. So anyway, I wanted to show you that, and while I'm at it, I was going to show you the tools that we will be using in the next phase of this. I don't have any uh, paper towel cores right now, uh, the tubes. I have one toilet paper tube, and uh, uh, I'll use it to show you the process of filling the tubes. And then I use these muffin pans for the little uh, discs. And uh, after I empty them, it's always good to come in here. I have a lid over there that I usually just press all of that back pretty flat so that it doesn't have big, uh, so that it doesn't have big dents sticking up in the center. I'll press it all down pretty flat. But, um, Anyway, I'll be using those. Those are the forms that I'll be using this time. There's a lots of things you can use as forms. Um, 
I have thought about using one of the paraffin boxes of the boxed paraffin. I've thought about trying to use one of those. Uh, I'll probably use that for sand and wax at some point for carving. And I'll probably show you a little bit about the sand and wax, though I don't intend to do this much with that. I'll just show you what it is later. Um, I have this. This is from a, a deep fryer from a long time ago. And uh, it is really nice for picking up the mix and putting it in these. Um, it it works really good and then you can kind of press it down and and all and get it ready to be pressurized um there's one other thing down here i want to grab and it is a jar and i'm looking for where my jar is there it is i have this jar also that i use it's um a uh coconut oil jar off-brand coconut oil jar <laughs> that works real good for pressing in these forms when you get those biscuits in there. This is a spatula, uh, old spatula, and uh, it works pretty good for filling the tubes and for filling these and for stirring, though most of the time I just use this tool for stirring. This is the one I usually use for stirring that stuff. Um, and this one I use for stirring and cleaning and, and a variety of things. Those are actually for uh, plaster work and that sort of thing. And I am a multi-functional person who uses my tools for lots of different things. Um, I don't use knives to screw in screws anymore and take them out because it ruins your knife tip and it's twice as much work, so I don't do that. These little pieces I use sometimes. Um, the larger cap is what I originally used all the time to hold the bottom of it in place and set it in there while I pushed the stuff down in with um, this smaller cap. I still use the smaller cap, but I don't use this as much because I've gone to these little portion cups. Um, you can buy these portion cups in about any grocery store and that sits down in there real good and what I find is I can twist it like that and it'll compress the stuff here and let it come apart real easy so I really like those in a little better than this little lid that I used originally but anything like that's going to work you just have to have something to uh, set it in so that the sand and wax or uh, the wax and and sawdust doesn't come out the other end. So those are the tools I'm going to be using in the next step. And I will join you again for the second part of this in the studio. <laughs>